the hour of six o'clock having come and gone. It's actually 6.07. I'd like to call the regular meeting of the City Council to order at 6.07 p.m. Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll? Yes. Navarrete? Here. Tillman? Here. Williams? Here. Gardner? Here. Smith? Here. Thank you, everyone. Um, just uh, before we start, just want to thank uh, our fire department and our police department uh, in light of the tragedy that happened at Park River Oaks. Uh, we have a resolution on the agenda and we invited all of the uh, police departments and also our, our fire chief will be helping us coordinate and all of our uh, personnel to come before the next city council meeting so we can thank you personally uh, for the outstanding job you did in saving lives. Um, there were over 372 people or more, and Alderman uh, Smith can give the, uh, the correct numbers on the buildings. Um, and unfortunately, there was one loss of life. And our policemen and our firemen did a great job in not only protecting residents, but also uh, helping to coordinate in the aftermath. And we want to thank them for that. We also want to thank the American Red Cross for not only coming to Calumet City and helping us. Uh, Governor Pritzker, we had a call today that uh, he coordinated along with the White House with the Illinois Emergency Management and also the Federal Emergency Management uh, in our process to help our residents more. Uh, I also want to thank our Community Economic Development Department um, all of our departments that came through for our residents. Um, we had several businesses that participated and helped us. Uh, businesses like Sunrise Cafe, Pete's Produce, uh, McDonald's. Uh, we'll get another list. Uh, but these businesses came through uh, along with our chief of staff. I would ask um, the aldermen who not only participated, all the aldermen stepped up. Uh, from Alderman Gardner driving golf cart carts to help residents to Alderman Smith, Alderman Tillman, Alderman Williams help coordinate it uh, with Cook County Emergency Management, uh, Alderman Navarrete, Alderman Wilson, uh, who went to the sites and helped residents. Uh, we know that this is a long process, and I want to let the residents know that Calumet City is here for you. Uh, we have not only planned uh, with each other, but also we have implemented uh, through our police chief and our fire chief, our system to make sure the residents know that we are here to make sure that they, their long-term health is, uh, what is our priority. So I would ask everyone to stand for a moment of silence for uh, the loss of life that happened uh, at the Park Revolt. Thank you, everyone. This time we'll call uh, Pastor Stokes up to uh, offer us prayer, and then we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. Pastor Stokes. Our God and Father, we thank you tonight for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for your loving kindness toward us. We thank you for your hand of grace that is upon every person in this room. <clears throat> we give you praise tonight, God, for the wisdom and experience that is in this room tonight that has been ordained to lead and bring solutions to this city. We lift up the Mayor Thaddeus Jones tonight, God, that he may continue to lead and have a spirit of wisdom and counsel. We pray, God, for those residents who have been displaced due to the devastation of no act of their own we lift up this bereaved family tonight. We ask that your spirit of counsel and comfort be there for that family in the days to come. We pray and thank you for the bravery and resilience of the public servants, especially of this city and even those municipalities, townships, and other communities that came to the aid of KMS City in her hour of need. We give you praise and honor tonight, God, because we are here, we are alive, and we have solutions uh, available that you want to birth through us. So we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. At this time, will everyone rise for the Pledge of Allegiance?
We're at the stage of public comments. Is there anyone from the public who would like to comment? Please step to the mic and state your uh, comment. Um, John Rabicki, I've been coming here regular the last six months. I don't know if I ever mentioned this before. It's not to allow music. I already discussed that with the mayor. But it's a couple other issues I have with the city. Um, mainly, I don't know, but the city's going to put the speed bumps back out again. But I was at my mom's house the other day. I think it was Tuesday, cutting her grass. And she lives at 164th and State Line. And um, the car is just going down there. It's, it, it, they, they have no consideration for kids in the street, bicyclists, uh, people crossing the street. They are going down State Line Road from Shrum Road today, and they're not even stopping at the stop signs. I don't know if the speed bumps are coming back, but I'd appreciate looking into that on State Line Road between Shrum Road and the river. Um, the second thing I have is, I don't know if you can do anything about it, um, Michigan City Road and Torrance Avenue, the apron there, I know it's a county road. Uh, I don't even come back. I work at Pete's, and I don't even come down Michigan City Road. Anymore. Somebody's going to get killed over there because the apron, people got a third lane at right there on the intersect. All they got to do is cut the apron out and pave it real quick over there. That's the other thing. And my third, third and final thing is demolitions of some of these buildings in this town. I don't know if Calumet City is going to do any demolishing this year, but there are some real eyesores in the city. Michigan City Road and Torrance, the, uh, the um, car wash. Um, Burnham Avenue across from the bank, a car wash. I know they're opening a car wash on um, Torrance Avenue, Buddy Bear, but um, there's, some, there's some real places in the city that are abandoned and been abandoned, and um, I just hope the city will start turning some of these buildings down because it's either going to burn down or somebody's going to kill them or I mean, they're eyesores. I mean, the one on the, the car wash on Michigan City Road and Torrance. They stripped half of it and they left the other half. It's, it's, it's basically, that's the three topics I just want to know. I don't know if the city can do anything, but I don't know if I even bring it up. But thank you so much, city. You're doing a great job. Probably see you next month. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else uh, from the public who'd like to step up and make comments on the, under public comments? If you can step to the mic and if you want to step to the mic and state your comments, please. No, you can you can state them here, and if you want to submit them, we can make them part of the record. everyone. My name is Diane Blocker. I live at 1383 Imperial Avenue in Calumet City. I have major concerns for our city. When I moved in this area over 20 years ago, it was a beautiful township and our town is falling apart. We have, uh, as the gentleman stated, we don't have a grocery store. We don't have, when is the we don't have a grocery store, we don't have a cleaners, we don't have a drugstore. What's being done? When are we going to address it? I see letters coming through the mail that said we're talking about it, but when are we going to be about it? When are we going to do something about it? We have drug problems. I really don't want the community that I live in to be Harvey or another Dalton. All I see a liquor stores and pawn shops. And we see them popping up every three months. Another liquor store and another pawn shop. And I really can't afford to go anywhere else. I'm a senior citizen. I bought this home because I wanted to retire in Calumet City. We have a quiet block and we're surrounded by drugs. When are we going to do something about it? Hi, my name is Paula Nelson, and I live on the 1300 block of uh, Imperial Avenue. This, that's my neighbor. And we are ha I had already talked to Alderman um, Smith 
regarding the uh, speed bumps. So, you know, I've been coming, you know, back and forth. But I was concerned about the same thing as far as the stores. You know, the only thing we see when I drive around the neighborhood, my husband and I, are dollar stores and beauty supply stores. We have to go out of our area, even to South Holland, Homewood, or either Indiana to go to a decent drug store or grocery store, you know. And then when it's, when it's really nice outside, you get the loud, loud music. I constantly call the police, and they do come. You know, we, have, we still have kids on our block. We still have a lot of senior citizens, which I'm one. I may not look like one, but I'm one. And I don't I'm not going to tolerate that. We've been here 17 years, you know, and everything was fine. You know, but around the corner from us, those guys, they're younger, and on the other corner, on 163rd and Imperial, that those two houses, they zoom up and down the street like they're on the Bishop Ford. And we have kids, still have kids, and you know, people have grandkids on our block. You know, and it's ridiculous. And a lot of us have, still have little dogs. People are walking their dogs. You know, people are afraid, our seniors are afraid to come out, you know, when it's dust dark because of all this mess you know, that's going on. And, you know, it, it needs to stop because somebody's gonna get hurt. So, thank you. Thank you. And uh, so this is the public forum and we will definitely be, uh, I will ask Deanne to get your information. I will just say that we are submitting a plan that the Alderman saw presentations for uh, a possible grocery store that we're working with on in the sixth ward. Uh, we do have a pharmacy in Calumet City. Uh, it's African American owned. Three pharmacies in Calumet City. Uh, one is African American owned, uh, which is. Uh, go ahead, Alderman. Victory, Victory Pharmacy is a small pharmacy. It's actually right off of 159th Street. Uh, it's a little more than the old uh, upper school supply uh, place used to be. Yeah. I'm sorry. We also we have uh, Victory Pharmacy, which is right off 159th, right next to where the it's it's right around where Citibank is, uh, right across in that strip mall. Okay, it's black owned. Uh, we also have CVS, and we also have um, Walgreens. So we have we're trying to get more, but we do have uh, we have. We have uh, Walgreens. We also have uh, Pete's, and we also have Aldi's. Aldi's is actually in Calumet City. So we do have, uh, and, then, and we also have some other things that are coming. The Wilder Indoor Food Foods Farm, that's coming. Uh, I'm expecting, preferably, targeting to open sometime uh, third quarter of this year, so sometime probably around uh, August. And uh, we are working on those things to bring more of them out here. Uh, but. Uh, if, if I can talk to you all offline after this meeting, I can give you a little bit more, uh, share a little bit more information. Uh, also, if you, you all are also in the 7th Ward, I have meetings every third Saturday from 10 to noon. Uh, you all, everyone within the ward is welcome to come. It's from 10 a.m. Uh, to noon. It's at the Calumet City Public Safety Training Center at 24 State Street, where I talk about these things that are upcoming. So I'd appreciate it if you also come there too. All right, thank you. And I will say part of, and I know everyone is, is wanting the city to fast pace and fast, fast track some of the things that we're doing. We got $42 million in grants last year to help rebuild Cayman City. We got $8 million to help do Burnham Avenue, which is construction is going on right now. We got $2.5 million to do Pulaski Road. Uh, through state grants. We requested federal money to help rebuild a bunch of our streets. We have a plan to rebuild our sewer. We have, in two th May 1st, we had 413 businesses. Today, we have 612 new businesses. Businesses that see Calumet City on the rise in our growth. So I would ask residents to be patient. We do have a plan to rebuild our city to make sure that businesses are coming. The alderman did mention that we have 79th Street Barbecue that's opening up on June 25th. We have Wilder Fields, as he mentioned, that's opening up. We have Buddy Bear Car Wars, a $11 million project in the second ward.
that's happening. So I would just encourage you, uh, we are going to do a better job of communicating all of the economic opportunities that are coming to Calumet City. And at some point, uh, probably in this meeting, we'll have our assistant chief come up and talk about our crime plan for the summer. So we hired 17 new police officers. We hired 10 firefighters. We are requesting, and we're not requesting, demanding our police that are going to be on bike patrol um, and walk in our neighborhoods uh, this summer. Uh, so we're bringing that back, and we're going to make sure the residents feel comfortable in their homes. So I would invite you to join the aldermen, join the city council. Um, I'm encouraged by residents attending these meetings because that's how you get the information that, uh, that you know that Cayman City uh, is moving in the right direction. Um, so I'll ask Deanne to make sure that she gets your information and the Alderman will as well so we can get you uh, the plan that we're presenting to the City Council to make sure that businesses keep coming to our city. Um, the next item that we have, uh, approval of minutes. Uh, item five, we have ordinance and resolutions. Uh, is there a motion uh, to approve the minutes as presented? So moved. Motion made by Alderman Smith, second by Alderman Second. Williams. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, reports of standing committees, uh, finance, Alderman Gardner. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, on June 6th of uh, this year, this month, uh, finance, Committee meeting was held uh, where we discussed several um, outstanding invoices to Benford and Brown and Associates. Uh, we, uh, the committee, moved uh, in favorable consideration to pay those invoices. And so on tonight's agenda before you are those invoices. There was lengthy discussion uh, regarding several components of those invoices. And again, as I stated previously, we moved, the committee moved in favorable consideration of paying those outstanding invoices. That's all I got, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Public safety, Alderman Williams. Uh, thank you, Mayor. A public safety meeting was held on yesterday, which was uh, June 8th um, of this year, um, where we discussed uh, some of the items that are on the agenda in reference to the June 18th event. Um, we also discussed uh, the uh, implementation of speed cameras in Calumet City. Uh, there's still some state, legis some state legislation that um, keeps us from moving in that direction right now. But I, from what I'm under from what I understand, Mayor, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, there is some legislation being revised in uh, downstate so that we can a uh, community of this size entertain possibly uh, implementing a speed speed camera program. Um, we discussed the cost of those speed cameras, and we also discussed, um, again, the June, the safety, some of the safety measures that will be taking place in the um, at, uh, June 10th, June, uh, June 18th event. We also discussed the uh, safety concerns of having a July 4th Freedom's Eve event. Um, I think we're going to talk about that again in the future. Uh, so. Uh, if anyone needs a detailed report, you can email me at uh, rwilliams at calumetcity.org or just give me a phone call at 708-891-8194 or 708-212-2240. Thank you. 708-891-8194. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Tillman, Ordinance and Resolution. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, ordinance resolutions meeting was held on May 31st, 2022. Um, the minutes were done, and we actually just approved the minutes in item 5A of this agenda. The report and the recommendations from the uh, committee meeting will actually be on the June 23rd council meeting. So I'll give the full report then. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Alderman Smith. Uh, permits and licensing? Yes, uh, no report at this time, but I will be calling a meeting at first availability this month. At that particular meeting, we will be reviewing uh, any current active applications as well as any applications that uh, are currently uh, revoked. Uh, so one of the things that uh, for those uh, residents who are here, the License and Permits Committee actually is the body more or less that recommends uh, what businesses are approved 
based on zoning, based on uh, need, and several other factors. So if you would wish to, to attend, I would ask that you just check the city website as well as uh, City Hall posting, as uh, I'm very open to your feedback, and I'm sure the other members are also. Thank you. Public Works, Alderman Navarrete. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> just a reminder to residents to continue to report any abandoned properties that have uh, overgrowth uh, with grass or weeds, uh, please call your Public Works Department or your alderman or here City Hall. Um, and then I will be uh, calling a Public Works Committee meeting to discuss capital needs items for Public Works. Uh, that would be capital um, equipment needs uh, prior to the June 23rd 3rd meeting. So uh, you can look out on the website for, for that meeting. Uh, it'll be prior to the June 23rd regular council meeting. That's all, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. <coughs> City Council reports. Uh, Alderman Navarrete will start on your side. Thank you, Mayor. Just <coughs> briefly uh, to residents, uh, we're going to be closing up the First Ward Vision and Action Plan. Um, thank you for the feedback. Uh, we did put an announcement in uh, two newsletters ago to kind of get the final rounds of feedback there. So I appreciate everyone uh, that participated in that. Uh, two years ago, we uh, set out and had an agenda for the first ward. So we, uh, in this current one that comes out, you'll see what we have accomplished, uh, what we have next uh, to accomplish. Um, so look out for the first ward vision and action plan. Um, should be coming out hopefully sometime in July. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Tillman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, real quick. Um, the third and fourth ward, ward held our uh, monthly town hall meeting this past Monday. Um, I really want to give a big thank you to um, Ms. Val Williams from the Economic Development Department and Director Tillman. I had a couple residents share with me that Calumet City can't go wrong with those two women um, in our departments or in, in Calumet City. So thank you all for kind of spearheading that meeting and taking the meeting over for myself um, even. Um, I also want to thank Public Works, Police, and Fire for coming to the meeting and sharing information. And I want to let the residents know that the July 4th meeting um, is canceled because of the holiday, and the next meeting will be August 1st. Um, so we will not have a meeting on July 4th. The next meeting will be August 1st at 6.30 at uh, Downey Park, uh, 300 Jeffrey. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Williams. Thank you, Mayor. Um, real, real quick. Um, first, we give honor to God who makes all things possible. Uh, I want to also want to thank the residents that came out to the uh, meeting uh, this past Monday. Uh, of course, your concerns were uh, heard, documented, and we will be, will be reasonably addressing those as soon as possible. Um, also, I want to um, invite everyone to the Juneteenth event. I'm really uh, excited about this event because we haven't had anything in the last couple of years where we were actually able to gather. Um, so there's a lot of time and effort has gone into this uh, to put this on for the residents. So please, I have some flyers here if anyone wants to, uh, to, ha to get one. And I also have flyers for the other aldermen to uh, distribute throughout your, um, your perspective areas. Um, and I think that's it, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Gardner. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to keep encouraging the fifth ward residents Contact my office with any reports of issues, blighted properties, continue to report those properties to my office. 708-891-8195. Also, uh, many of you have received the newsletter. Uh, my call to action was in there to the men of the fifth ward, plan on hosting a uh, real men barbecue picnic. Um, those of you that are interested, you can contact my office, 708-891-8195. Uh, please continue to uh, for suspicious activities to my office. If you see something, say something. Or if it needs immediate attention, please uh, dial 911 or you can contact the police department, uh, non emergency 708 8628 Um Also, those of you that are still in need of K95 masks, I still have plenty available. Hand sanitizer, please continue to contact the office. Uh, those items will be dropped off to you promptly. Uh, that's all I have, man. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Smith. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first and foremost, I uh, want to remind the residents, uh, 79th Street Barbecue uh, will be having an opening on June the 25th. 
If you have any questions on that, uh, please contact me. My number is 708-891-8197 or email asmith at calumetcity.org. Also, um, want to definitely uh, give a grand thanks to public safety, uh, fire and police departments, uh, my uh, uh, seventh ward liaison and uh, ward assistant, Bridget Burns, uh, the mayor, most importantly, Alderman Gardner, Alderman uh, Williams, and Alderman Wilson for their efforts in helping with the recovery. Uh, unfortunately, I was affected at the, um, the fire that occurred this past weekend. Uh, it affected, as the mayor mentioned earlier, over 300 residents, uh, most of which still are displaced from their homes. Uh, we're working in the relief recovery effort. For those residents in the park who are interested and need assistance, please contact uh, my office at 708-891-8197. Also see the city's website on the CC uh, RAP resident uh, assistance program. That program is also being extended to help out the park residents who are definitely in need. Uh, also, I want to thank uh, the Red Cross along with all its strategic partners. Uh, we put on a, a great event this past Tuesday and we look to see more productive efforts from that. And also, uh, all the respective partners, um, thank you, IDORS, uh, just, just all of them. Uh, great information for those who've been affected. To give you an idea of, of how bad this is, uh, that one fatality, we, we have uh, quite a bit of immense damage that was done at, at, from the fire in the 200 building. So the 200 building uh, for this, at this particular point is not livable. Uh, the 300 building is actually pending with uh, smoke remediation and uh, air remediation, a couple other things uh, currently in progress. If you have questions on that, uh, please give my office a call at 708-891-8197. Also, please uh, contact the 1B uh, condo associations or the, uh, if you're a park resident, or the 1A condo associations. If you are in need of any uh, city uh, information that certifies uh, that the fire happened and you are a park resident and you need information to file your claim, please contact the Calumet City Fire Department as they will provide a, a letter on that behalf. Thank you. Also, uh, the, uh, what is it, <laughs> sorry, June 18th, Saturday, June 18th is our uh, monthly meeting, town hall. It will be at the Calumet City Public Safety Training Center, so please free, free to uh, join, bring your concerns uh, at that meeting. We pretty much discuss uh, some of the things that are going on in the city, things that are going on in the ward, uh, some of the current projects. Love to see you. I do offer refreshments, so uh, you are welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Under the mayor's report, at this time, I'd like to call up uh, Chief Bockert and Deanne Jaffrey to give the council and residents an update. Uh, last week, I issued an emergency declaration, which allowed the city to not only interact with federal officials but also with state officials uh, who we had a meeting with uh, today um, as part of that update this city council approved uh, supporting residents um, and placing them in hotels and also providing meals uh, to families affected in the park uh, so i would like uh, deanne and uh, our fire chief to give a brief update on our efforts, uh, Deanne has been coordinating with all the aldermen, uh, particularly Alderman Smith, uh, not only on our efforts from the city, but also our efforts with uh, FEMA, IEMA, uh, and federal officials. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Um, as Mayor mentioned, Alderman Smith and I connect multiple times a day throughout the day. Um, I am pleased to state that the residents that we're staying at the hotel for the most part have all checked out they have taken the steps necessary <coughs> excuse me to contact their insurance agents agencies um, to make arrangements um, we have approximately 15 hotel accommodations um, that was based upon conducted or determined by phone calls made by Fred Park the city, um, the association, reaching out to the residents one call at a time. Starting with the 200 building, 100, 300. Um, in addition to that, as Mayor mentioned, we have coordinated 
catering. Um, Mia Jones, the administration of the city, has arranged for catering. That food is being catered daily at 5 p.m. to the clubhouse. Um, and they're serving, I believe, 100 people. Yeah. And that's been plentiful thus far, correct? Um, in addition to that, to the mention of the MARC event, that was the Tuesday event that Alvin Smith mentioned, Multi-Agency Resource Center. Um, so that was coordinated by the Red Cross, um, number of organizations, resources, tables set up for the residents. R residents ended up spending three, four hours on the average. It was, it was an all day event, uh, there were well over 100 uh, residents from Park and attendants. Uh, there were well over 100 uh, park residents that were in attendance, uh, primarily the residents that were affected by the fire. Uh, it was a great event, a lot of multi-agencies uh, there that work with the Red Cross for recovery and relief. Uh, the 200 building residents are going to be affected for about roughly easily about 18 months. Uh, and the uh, 300, uh, it, there's no ETA, but we expect at minimum probably a month or, or two. So um, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot to digest at the moment. Um, they had uh, health professionals, mental health professionals, um, like I said, insurance agencies, um, a number of resources available. Um, very tough for the residents to go through the process. We try to, you know, carry as much of the burden, having all the resources available under one roof. Um, you know, to really make it as efficient as possible. I will say that there are a couple of residents I'm still in touch with that continue to struggle with the process. Um, and so we, you know, we are on the phone daily. I go, whether it's the hotel, um, the Red Cross, over to the park condos, um, speak to them face to face. We've had quite a few residents come here to City Hall as well. So we are continuing that outreach um, we will continue to stay in communication um, as long as needed. The other thing that I learned today, and I haven't announced this to the council yet, but there is a new point of contact for Red Cross. Her name is Leslie Luther. She's the Assistant Director of External Affairs and is specific to Calumet City. So I'll share all of that information. But for record, um, her phone number, 815-761. 1771. Again, Leslie Luther, she's the Assistant Director of External Affairs. Um, when this all started or happened, she was out of town. She's now back in town. So she is now the main point of contact. Um, and you keep that phone number, please? Oh, absolutely. 815 761 1771. I do also have her email address, which is Leslie, L E S. L I E dot Luther, L U T H E R, Luther at Red Cross Battle. Leslie dot Luther at Red Cross Battle. All right. So she's our main point of contact. Um, she did advise that residents have not been taking advantage or making use of the shelter the 24-7 over, overnight shelter. Um, as a result of that, and this is their second round of offering, the shelter, um, as a result of that, they are taking a very close look as to how much longer that shelter will be available. Um, and so they are being very patient with us. Again, we're going through another round of phone calls and outreach to the residents. Um, you know, this is kind of a second and almost third go round now, but <coughs> If residents need shelter, and, and through the shelter they offer three meals a day, right? And this is in addition to the catering that we offer um, at the clubhouse. Um, but if nobody takes advantage of the shelter, they will close the shelter. Um, I think that's all I have to report on that end, and I will turn it over to Chief Buckley. Thank you. Um, most of the stuff was covered tonight, but I mean, this was true, a, a, a team effort by every city department. Every city department was involved. Every city department was out there the day of the fire, and that continues to this day. So we appreciate uh, your guys' support. Uh, just to put things in perspective as far as the fireside goes, 
Uh, we have a mutual aid agreement with all of our local departments, which consists of 20, uh, 20 departments. Out of that 20 departments, 20 of them were, were represented that night on the scene. Because of the magnitude of this fire, we also went to an interdivisional box, which brought in other agencies from other, uh, as far away as like Frankfurt and uh, Manhattan area. All in all, there was 37 fire and EMS agencies represented, not just necessarily on the scene, but change of quarters throughout the whole district, along with on the scene. So 37 agencies, we can't thank them enough for the effort. And also, just to put this in perspective, uh, I've been getting phone calls already by Fire Engineering and Firehouse Magazine. This is one that goes out throughout the country. And they've already been in contact. They already did a, uh, a quick uh, a scenario of it. And they want to do a full article because of the unique nature of this fire. Just the way it started, uh, how it, it spread so fast. It was a wind-driven fire, as we stated. Uh, when our companies got on the scene, the, the first floor, as you know, was a parking garage. Two through seven were fully involved in the balcony area. And that was because of the wind-driven fire. There was reports of 40 mile per hour gusts that, that day. Um, a couple of the videos that we got by residents prior to the fire department getting there, you could hear the wind through the cell phone, as is pretty known when you're standing outside. Uh, so it's going to be, it's a unique fire. We're looking forward to these uh, studies that are going to be done so we can learn from it as well. Uh, it was a true case. Uh, again, I can't thank our neighbors enough. Dalton, Cal City, South Holland, and Lansing were the initial companies on the scene. 22 guys. 22 guys, and we had six floors going at once. Uh, again, I can't thank it enough. Uh, the chiefs in the neighboring town, uh, they, uh, they, they took over. Uh, it was a group, it was a true group effort, so I appreciate everything. And we're going to recognize them uh, later on in the council meeting as well. Uh, as the Alderman Smith, and he pretty much hit everything on the head, uh, right now the main focus is to get the residents from 100 and 300 back into their places. But there's a lot of uh, smoke damage throughout because it is a common hallway. It's a 312 unit building. It's a common hallway that goes from the north end all the way to the south end. Once they get those areas cleaned up, we should be able to get the residents back in. The 200 is a d totally different story. The 1B section of the 200, uh, right now, they, uh, they ask that everyone stay out of the building uh, unless they have uh, uh, you know, a reason to be in there. But as far as the residents, they're not going to be allowed in that 1B section. 1A, uh, that's something that we need to work on as well. Uh, that's going to be a little bit later uh, compared to the 100 and 300. But the uh, 1A, we should get those residents in probably within the next few months as well. But again, I can't thank all city departments, our, our neighboring towns. It was a great showing of support. And that continues today. I mean, that doesn't start, uh, you know, end when the fire ends. That continues to this day, and uh, we just appreciate everything that you guys are doing. Thank you, Chief. Do you Chief. guys have any questions? Can I answer quick? All right, thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, item 8 on the agenda are information items to be accepted and placed on file. Uh, is there a motion to approve items 8A through G? So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Williams. Second. Second by Alderman Smith. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Item eight, um, eight, I mean nine A one through seventeen. I would like to request that item seven be removed. That was just added. So can we remove item seven? So, so Motion made by Alderman Smith to remove item seven. Second? Is there a second? Second, second by Alderman Tillman. All in favor to remove Aye. item seven. Aye. So the motion would be to approve item nine, eight, one, two, one through six, and eight through 17. Is there a motion to approve those items? So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Williams. Second by Alderman Smith. Roll call. Madam Clerk. Yes. 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 May I brief question? Yes. Sorry. Uh, on item number thirteen, I noticed that we didn't have much in the budget for this year for that program. We would be able to, with the new budget coming up, add to it if we as the program extends into the summer, correct? Yes. Yeah. yeah the okay. participants or just the, the budget? Uh, so item number 13 with the youth hiring, I know we only have 5000 in the budget this year, but um, I know we have budget coming up, so we'd be able to, if we exhaust the five, with this new budget we're going to pass, uh, 
I guess, keep the program going throughout the summer. Yes. Is that a treasurer's? It's a treasurer's. Shaking his head, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Alderman. Uh, item B, our building permits. Um, we didn't vote on eight for Sorry, Alderman. We didn't vote on eight for 17. Uh, it was included in the motion, Alderman. Oh, okay. Item B of building permits. Um, do you guys want to table this for uh, to allow the alderman a chance to review them or approve them tonight? Uh, no, These no have been reviewed by inspectional services, so yeah. uh, the motion can be made pending the alderman approval to approve these uh, items in the sixth ward. So moved. So yeah. Motion made by Alderman Williams, second by Alderman Gardner. Uh, Navarrete, sorry. I made the motion. <laughs> so, motion made by Alderman Williams, second by. No, not Red Garden. Never made the motion, not second. So, the motion. We're all soft spoken. I know, right? I got it. So, the motion was made by Alderman Navarrete and second by Alderman Gardner. Uh, roll call, Madam Clerk. Navarrete? Yes. Alderman Wilson? Alderman Tillman? Yes. Alderman Williams? Yes. Alderman Gardner? Yes. Alderman Patton? Smith. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Uh, item C are resolutions and ordinances. Does anyone have any questions about resolutions and ordinances that are on the agenda? Uh, Mayor, item number one, uh, I tried to review it. I saw there was some quite a bit of changes in, in item one. I don't know if we want to discuss those now or maybe defer it, make a motion to defer it to Alderman Tillman's committee. Uh, Resolutions and the ordinances committee. Motion is to table, uh, actually, motion is to refer item one, crime free housing, to second. the ordinance and resolution. Motion made by Alderman Smith. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alderman Navarrete to refer item. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item number one will be referred to the ordinance and resolution committee. Thank you, Mayor. Resolutions two through seven. Is there a motion to approve uh, ordinances and resolutions two through seven on the agenda? Motion made by Alderman Gardner. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alderman Tillman. Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll? Alderman Navarrete? Yes. Alderman Wilson? Alderman Tillman? Yes. Alderman Williams? Yes. Alderman Gardner? Yes. Alderman Jackson? Alderman Smith? Yes. Before we uh, go to financial matters, I'd like to recognize the city engineer. We have three substantial items on the financial that deal with our sidewalk program, also our engineering program for Michigan City Road, and our PACE bus program. So I will uh, turn it over to Matt Berger for a brief uh, report on those. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, the sidewalk program, uh, it's the MFT uh, sidewalk program that we do annually. Uh, that was sent out to bid and uh, we're making a recommendation to award it to uh, Davis Concrete. They, um, with all the input that we got from all the aldermen, um, we're gonna be able to address a lot of areas of need and uh, they are looking to get going on this rather quickly and we're gonna be hopefully knocking this out, some of the sidewalk needs and concerns that we have over the course of the next uh, two months, two and a half, three months. Um, item uh, three, it's actually under financial matters and it is a Michigan City Road uh, multi-use trail. Uh, working together with the Community and Economic Development Department, uh, Calumet City uh, was the recipient of a $360,000 grant. It's funded through Cook County through their Invest in Cook program. The city does have a little small match, uh, $90,000 um, for it. This is um, to connect a dead end part of the trail that is at Torrance Avenue and Michigan City Road and it'll link it back up to the Burnham Greenway, uh, completing the loop there and uh, uh, providing a greater mobility for those multi, the, use the multi-use trail and, and uh, for the area. Um, items uh, 15 and 16 are uh, intricately linked together. Uh, that is the PACE transfer facility. Again, working with our community and economic development department here, um, and engineering, we were able to work together and work out with PACE an intergovernment agreement where they will fund the design and construction of $2 million to Calumet City 
for a bus transfer station. This is going to be at Ring Road, right uh, across the street from the Sam's Club, essentially. Um, and Pace uh, had a meeting with them. Um, Mayor wanted to report that they are extremely excited for the opportunity to work with Calumet City. Um, and really, really just excited about the, the, the you know, how this is gonna open up and be a new facility in the south side that they currently do not have and really help them with their bus service. Thank you. Does any alderman have any question for city engineer? Yes. Uh, how much are we anticipating each uh, alderman to get in their respective boards this year for the MFT sidewalk replacement program, dollar amount? Uh, traditionally, typically we program about 80,000 um, in for the sidewalk, and um, uh, we get the the list of needs. Um, working with you guys and trying to allocate and, and distribute it as, as evenly as possible as we can. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And Alderman, I think as we've done in the past, if any alderman uh, runs out of funds, we'll make sure that uh, the, the mayor's account has money, and then we also have additional <laughs> funds. <laughs> In your awards. In other awards, yeah. Yes. So the eighty thousand is the total amount. Are we looking to divide that amongst the seven wards? Yeah, we typically do about eighty to ninety thousand dollars, and and put that in, and then we got. Um, this year we went a little bit heavier. It's about ninety-two thousand dollars is what we got um, for the that we're going to be allocating to the the sidewalk program, and that's going to be um, construction will be go occurring over the course of the next few months here, and concluding. Uh, hope ideally by Labor Day. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor. Just All briefly. Navarrete. Thank you. Uh, typically we alternate with starting from the north side of the city or south. Uh, you know if we're starting on the north side of the city this year, mm -hmm. specifically maybe the northeast corner, <laughs> working our way south. <laughs> have not discussed that yet with the, uh, uh, with the contractor, but we will put that in, in the notes. That Thank they, you. Thank this you. This is what we've been advised. Well, in that case, the fourth word goes first because they never made it last year. <laughs> um, does any of does any of that um well i guess we can i i wanted a status update on the uh pulaski construction the uh pulaski road resurfacing uh construction uh we have a uh we are, the design is being wrapped up and that one is going to be going out to bid here uh pretty soon okay that's the pulaski is the one we got the $3 million from or $5 million from the state? That one is the um, funded through the $3 million, I believe. Okay. Uh, I know, Alderman, that was a concern in your ward, and that one is the priority. We also had the information update, which we'll give to the Alderman on Buffalo Avenue as well. So if you can work with Alderman Smith, provide update on Buffalo Avenue, we appreciate that. More than happy to. So Buffalo Avenue uh, went out to bid. Uh, the bid was awarded, and that project is slated to start construction. Um, we have to submit some paperwork to IDOT, um, and once we get that into them, uh, construction will probably be beginning within the next few weeks here. Uh, will, that, will that happen within this month or July? I would anticipate the construction just based on the fact that we have to submit the uh, MFT resolutions and some of the other documentation and the contracts to IDOT, it'll probably be kicking off in uh, July. But oh, you will see you. some investigative uh, sewer work occurring out there also too um, in the next week or two to try and clean up and, and get some of the sewers ready so that that way it is set for the construction of the road. Okay. Thank you. All right, financial items one through 28. Are there any questions? Um, Alderman Gardner, you have a motion to approve? So Alderman Gardner motions to approve financial items one through 28. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alderman Tillman. Madam Clerk, can you please call a roll? Yes. Alderman Navarrete? Yes. Tillman? Yes. <laughs> oh, hey, you guys be easy on the deputy clerk. She's. <laughs> Alderman Wilson? Yes. Alderman Tillman? Yes. 
Alderman Williams. He, yes. Alderman Gardner. Yes. Alderman Patrick. And Alderman Smith. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. So we are under unfinished business now. Alderman uh, Smith. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, and most importantly, I want to thank uh, uh, City Inspection. I want to thank uh, Ms. Cheryl Tailman, who is the uh, head of City Inspection. She's been great to work with uh, in the park relief and recovery with providing city services. I also want to thank uh, Mr. Edward Evans, who's also, who also works in the, um, in the City Inspectional Department. Uh, definitely want to thank Chief Pichard. Uh, for all of his assistance. I want to thank Deanne Joffrey for all of the work she's done. And I also want to thank uh, Mayor uh, Jones for all of the assistance he's been providing uh, with respect to this. Unfortunately, uh, many times uh, when you have emergencies like the park, um, you know, often a lot of, you often have a lot of confusion. I'm not saying that that's not here, but we're gonna get through it. Uh, if you're a resident of the park and you need assistance, please contact uh, the city, please contact my office, 708-891-8197. Also to those residents if I, that have pre-existing inquiries, if I haven't gotten back with you, my, my uh, fondest and humble apologies. Unfortunately, uh, this took a little bit more precedent. I will be uh, contacting you over the next couple of days, preferably between now and the weekend. Also, uh, I want to just remind residents, uh, the Seventh Ward uh, website will be going up very, very soon. I will provide a lunch date at uh, another meeting, preferably in the near future. And uh, just continue to report your concerns. If you have issues with vacant properties, if you see any suspicious activity, please contact the ward. Please contact me at 708-891-8197 or asmith at calumetcity.org. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Gardner. Yes, thank you. Real quick, I just want to remind the residents, the ones that have uh, contacted my office regarding speed bumps, those speed bar bumps are uh, being ordered. We're just waiting on them to come in. Public Works will have those down immediately. I urge the residents to be careful out there, watch the speeders, um, and also residents, please, uh, if you need assistance, um, apply to the Calumet City Resources uh, Residential Assistance Program. That's all I have in there. Thank you. Oh. Thank my prayers are with the people in the uh, park, the residents of the park that have been displaced. We're still in my prayers. So I got thank you, Alderman. Alderman Williams. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Just uh, to reiterate what the other Aldermen said, my thoughts and prayers are with all of the families that was uh, affected by this uh, horrific in uh, incident. Um, and if my office can be of any service or any help, uh, whatever it may be, please do not hesitate to call, reach out. 708-891-8194 uh, or 708-212-2240. And before I forget, the food box giveaway program has been um, suspended uh, until further notice. Uh, the mayor and I are working through some uh, more resources. Uh, not available, not able to take advantage of the Thornton Township uh, food box donations for, some, for whatever reason. There must be some something going on that I'm not privy to the information to share with, with anyone. But uh, hopefully they work through whatever it may be and we can get our resources back to the way that they were in the past. So thank you, Mayor. That's it. Thank you. Alderman Tillman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, on August 13th, the Thor Third Ward, Ward will be hosting its annual back to school event. We are currently in the planning stages. If you want to assist with the event, uh, during this stage, give my office a call at 708-891-8193. Also, Calumet City will be offering free legal services starting June 22nd from 5.30 to 8 p.m. at the Calumet City Library. Uh, residents can call or sign up on the city's website. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Navarrete. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, just want to echo uh, what my colleagues uh, have already said, but prayers out to those affected um, by the fire. Uh, thank you to the fire department uh, for their bravery uh, that they showed in, in, in getting that fire under control. And also to uh, echo Alderman Gardner's uh, statement, um, we did approve some speed bumps, additional speed bumps uh, in, this, um, in this agenda, so hopefully the lead time on that uh, isn't too long, but 
uh, Public Works will certainly be getting those down uh, as soon as they receive them. Uh, that's all, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. All. Uh, under the mayor, mayor's report, excuse me, just want to invite residents to uh, the library. A couple announcements for the library. The library has started the Jazz on the Grass, uh, Jazz and Blues, uh, which will start uh, next Thursday as well from 6 to 8. So anyone, you can bring your lawn chairs and come out and listen to uh, jazz music, blues, uh, right at the library, which is at 660 Manistee. Encourage all residents to go to the library and support. Uh, the library also has an after-school program, which the city council supported. Uh, the program had 86 participants in it. Uh, they meet on Tuesdays and Saturdays, so any men uh, and women who want to volunteer and be a mentor to young, win young men and women in Calumet City, uh, it is a CHAMPS program. Uh, this program is connected to President Barack Obama. Uh, this program is uh, primarily in the city, but it's first time in Calumet City. They're working with all our schools and also with daycare centers uh, in Calumet City to start a exciting mentoring program. So I encourage anyone who wants to be a mentor to uh, go to the link on our website. It's CHAMPS Mentoring Calumet City. Uh, and help encourage a young man, young woman uh, in school or in whatever profession they want to go to, but this is an exciting program for our city. Um, the last item, I wanted to state this publicly and I, I spoke to Alderman Wilson and I told her I would apologize to her personally. Um, I made an error in uh, communicating an issue with uh, extended stay. Uh, the Alderman has a passion for not only our community, but our, what our residents went through. Uh, her and I did speak about the is issue, uh, and I, my intentions tonight was to apologize to her publicly tonight, which I'm doing now. Uh, but my goal is to make sure that we all uh, understand when we have these tragedies, we all get passionate and we all get emotional, uh, me included. And one of the things I wanted to say to the Alderman was that I apologize uh, and look forward to some of the great communication we will have. Um, so that being said, that is our, I don't know, uh, City Treasurer Tarka, did you have anything for tonight? City Attorney Casper? That's all, they, uh, we have nothing further to come before the City Council. Is there a motion to adjourn at 7.04 p.m.? So, so moved. Motion made second. by Alderman Williams, second by Alderman Smith. All in favor? Aye. All right, meeting adjourned at 7.04 p.m. Thank you, everyone.